What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Track Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to... Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How is your day? How is your week? How is your life? Going. <laughs> what happened? You got... You I stumbled? Got, I, yeah, I got you, caught off guard. <laughs> my mind is like going, 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 and I'm speaking while I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, man. What's happening, babe? These freaking allergies are kicking my ass. I know. Have fun. Go ahead. Anyway, Advertise. Make sure you guys go to oppositesattractpodcast.com. <laughs> Share it with the people that you know. When you guys go there, you guys will see all of the ways that you can follow our social media. The first thing that's going to pop up is our resource list. And our resource list is a list of audios, um, podcasts, videos, videos, books, just information that we have got a hold of um, things that have helped us get our relationship to where it's at uh, become better parents become entrepreneurs leadership mm, that sounds good what you got there buddy and coffee. all that good stuff so if you would like that list all you have to do is visit our website opposite to track podcast.com yep and put in your information and you will get that resource list for free and not only that but it god forbid if something were to happen where we get wiped off social media because of something miguel said then we have your contact information well it's not even anything that i have to say i could just be we could be talking the truth and sometimes people don't like that stuff yeah and i got you yeah so we can stay in touch with you guys you guys can give us your information and uh we'll be able to stay in touch uh, and you'll also be able to see how you can support the show on our website by clicking the support the show link. And we'll tell you guys more about that later. Yes, yes. So this week we had a great opportunity to teach our son about making mistakes and forgiveness and all that good stuff. Yeah, we did. So um, let's get into parenting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm in the kitchen cooking dinner and Joey comes around the corner and he looks at me. His eyes are red and puffy and he says, mom, he's like, I have to tell you something. He's 11, by the way. Yes. And I said, what's up, dude? And he said, I did something, mom. And he put his head down and he just started crying like right yeah. there and then. And we had just got back from Walmart. And he told me that he took something from Walmart. Stole something. Yes. <laughs> and he was a mess. I can tell that it wasn't sitting with him well. Yeah. And he's like, I'm sorry. He's like, I knew that I was going to get in trouble, but I knew I had to confess. And so I'm sitting there with him and Recently, I did my own confessing, <laughs> right, yeah. to the kids yeah, yeah. about you jacking some dolls from a her, situation from your school. that I put myself in when I was younger, and I told the kids about it. And I remember Joey telling me, "Mom, what took you so long to confess?" Yeah. Was it the guilt eating you up? Yeah. And so I felt so proud in such a weird situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because normally yeah. you're upset. You're like, what? What did you do? How could you do that? But that's not the way we are. Right. And for him to take the initiative to confess just made me feel so proud. Yeah. And knowing that me confessing to him about me taking something, stealing something. Yeah. And he. He probably thought about it while when, when he was going through it. 
Right. Yeah. And it didn't take him that long. It did I mean, it was almost all. immediate. Right. Because, uh, so that day it was a, it, it was a busy, like we have, we always talk about how we're busy. That day was a busy day. Like we were running from one store to another store. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like you said, we had gone to Walmart and then we came home. And as soon as we came home, I had to go pick up Audrey at her softball practice. Right. So while I go pick her up at the softball practice, th- that's when all this is going on. And Joey's talking to you and telling you that he took the the toy from Walmart. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he was being hard on himself. You know, he was upset with himself. He wasn't happy with himself. And you said you noticed something when we were leaving Walmart. Like something was weird. Something was up. Well, remember we, you and I, we were grabbing stuff that he needed for a project. Yeah, and he was missing. And he disappeared. I'm like, where in the heck did this kid go? Like, why would he disappear when we're shopping for his project? Like, where'd he go? Yeah. And so I ended up having to call him through the intercom. And you found him. But when I seen Joey... He was flushed. He was, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, are you okay? You know, but I just thought that he thought that he was lost or that maybe, you know, you know how you get your adrenaline. Have you ever felt that way as a child? Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that's what was going on with him. Yeah. You know, but I knew like something was up with him, but I just thought he thought, or I thought he thought that he was lost or that we had. Right. You know, you didn't really think anything no, past that not yeah. at all so um so yeah after i i leave i go pick up audrey and i come back and it's probably and i saw probably similar to what you saw when yeah. he was talking to you about it right but i'm not done yet okay <laughs> so while we're talking you know he's telling me and you can see that he's very disappointed in himself yeah so i had to have that conversation with him that we all make mistakes we all make mistakes And I talked to him about, first of all, having the courage to tell the truth is one thing. And then feeling also, you know, just being hard on himself. And I had to have that entire conversation with him as well. Yeah. And it took him a while to adjust and to recognize what he did was a good thing. I mean, the confessing. Yeah. Yeah. And he asked me, he's like, when can I take it back? Yeah. Like he wanted to make it right. He still didn't feel good. Yeah. And on the way there, he's like, I hope the manager is kind. Yeah. You know? But when you walked through that door, after we had the conversation, I looked at him like, you need to go talk to your dad. Yeah. So, yeah. So once I got home, he was a mess. Like I could see something was going on and he's like, dad, I need to talk to you or something like that. It was as soon as I got through the door Mm -hmm. and, uh, excuse me, oh man, these freaking allergies. So, so, uh. I had to do something, so I tell him, I was like, all right, I'll meet you upstairs. So he runs upstairs, and I go up there, and he was a little bit ahead of me. So when I get into our bedroom, like, he's under the covers, mm-hmm. and he's, like, covering himself up with the covers. And I could see, like, actually, before we even went up the stairs, as we're heading up the stairs, I can see that his eyes were already red. And whatever it was, like, it was serious to him, right? Right. So we get upstairs and he's hiding under the covers. And when I see him, like he's already about to cry. You know, and I'm just. Like, I just get that that thought, like, what it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be okay. You know, that's just and then that's what I told him. I was like, whatever it is, it's going to be okay. And I just got under the covers with him and I give him a hug. And I don't remember exactly like how it happened or whatever, but he pretty much just told me. He just told me that he took something from the store. And, uh, you know, I asked him, like, why'd you do it or whatever? And, of course, it's because he wanted something or whatever. But he knew it was wrong. And, you know, he was telling us. And he and and he did say that he wanted to take it back to the store. And, you know, I shared with him that when I was growing up, 
I was like, I got in trouble for stealing something. You know, I, I was at a store and I took some stuff from the store and I don't think anybody was home. And I was telling him, I was like, I don't think anybody was home. And the only person that I could get a hold of was my best friend's mom. And she ended up coming to the store and picking me up from the security people. You know, and I was like, imagine, like, that's like your best friend's mom going to pick you up from stealing stuff at the store. That's pretty freaking embarrassing. You know, he's like, yeah. I was like, but I told him, I was like, this is different. I was like, you, you told us that you took something and you want to make it right. I was like, that is a good thing. It's not good that you took it, but you, re you recognize that you made a mistake and we're going to fix it. I was like, it's okay. I was like, you should feel bad. I was like, but what you have to do now is you got to learn from it. Learn from it and then just let it go. I was like, it's okay. This is what I was trying to get to and I lost my train of thought earlier when I told you I wasn't done. I told him, you recognized both of those voices. Yeah. And I talked to him about, you know, the angel and the devil sitting on his shoulders, right? Yeah. And I said, this is something that I need you to recognize because you're going to hear these two voices within you throughout your life. Yeah. Right? What made you decide to take that toy? I said, what voice did you hear? What, what did that voice tell you? Yeah. Just take it. You know, nobody's going to know. You're not going to get caught. Just take it. Yeah. It's, it was, yeah, nobody would have right? known anything. But do you understand? Yeah, it, it's true. As adults, you don't have to go to the gym. Not today. Stay in bed. Feels yeah. good. Right? Yeah. Don't do, the, you know, and, and, and so getting him to recognize those voices and the voice that said the feeling, because there's feelings attached to that voice. The feeling you had when, when that little voice was telling you to take the toy, what did you feel? Yeah. Scared, nervous. I'm like, do you recognize, did you recognize how your body felt? Yeah, that's good. I said, because when I saw you, your body was, you were red, you were flushed. So did you feel hot? Or cold or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and then after, I'm like, and then when you came home, because he went upstairs. Yeah. Right when we got home, he started transforming this little toy that he got. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, he, he started, he playing, started with playing with it. I'm like, do you remember what you felt upstairs when you decided to confess? What was the thought going through your head? He's like, I didn't feel good about myself. I knew yeah. it was wrong. And I knew I had to make it right. Yeah. And how did you feel? He's like, I was scared. How do you feel now? Better. But he was still mad at him. Like he was still yeah. disappointed in, in himself. Which is good. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, this voice, these voices, you're going to hear them throughout your life. Yeah. And now that you know how the negative voice feels and hear, and, and what it sounds like, then you know. Yeah. You see, and, and there was, there's something about, like we, we talked about it and it's something that we have to share with Joe about like beating yourself up because I think you should, you should beat yourself up when you make a mistake or, or whatever, but there has to be a balance. Like you can't just beat yourself up forever. The reason that you beat yourself up is because you know better because you have higher expectations for yourself. You should have 
done something better or you shouldn't have done something that you did or, or whatever. If you don't give a shit, that's different. You know, like he steals something and comes home and it's like, eh, who gives a fuck? Like they, they got tons of them at the store or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's a different attitude. Or you make a mistake and it's like, ah, eh, who gives a fuck? Like, yeah, I don't care. But the fact that it doesn't make you feel good is a good thing. Oh, yes. But I don't think. But like, you just can't hold on to that forever. You have to like at a certain point. You got to forgive from yourself. It and you let it go. Yep. And you I know? talked about it, that. It's similar. Yourself. It's similar to like um, when I miss something at work. You know, there was a time when I used to inspect helicopters and I had missed something, something that was kind of major, pretty major. And. I felt like shit. Like I felt horrible. And it was just one of those things that like after a certain point, I just realized like, all right, I'm going to do the next one. Like as soon as the next opportunity that comes up, I'm doing it again and I'll do it right. Mm -hmm. And I'll keep doing it until, you know, I feel good. But at a certain point, you just, you you can't beat yourself down about it. Right. But that day you also made the decision yeah. So you were you felt bad, obviously. You right. felt like shit. Yeah. But you also made the decision, okay, never doing that again. Yeah. Right? And that's how you corrected it. Yeah. See, with him, I know that with the way he felt, he's such a good boy. Going through this lesson at a young age, I don't think he'll put himself in that situation again. Yeah. It's like, if you want something, work for it. Yeah. It's not worth feeling the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment. Yeah. And that's the other, that comes with that. The other opportunity that we have was talking to him about consequences. Right. Like right now it's a toy. Right. From Walmart. No big deal. But even still that same exact toy as an adult, you're in trouble now. Right. So that's exact. And when we, and when him and I went back, there was a night supervisor that we spoke with, and I let Joey do all the talking. Yeah, he asked him if he could speak to him privately because the supervisor was surrounded by other coworkers, yeah. and Joey asked if he could speak to him privately, and I stood back and I let Joey handle it, and yeah. and he told him I have to take I have to tell you something. He's like, I took something from the store and he reached out of his pocket and pulled it out. Yeah. And he said, I'm sorry. And I know where the packaging is. Oh, okay. And the manager looked at me like, do you want me to scare the shit out of him? I'm like. (laughs) Traumatize this kid. I did that because he's like, do you want me to? And I already knew what he was going to say. And I'm like. Call the cops. Call the SWAT team. I shake, shake my head no. I'm like, it's a lesson. Yeah. And so that's when he shared with Joey that you did a really good thing. And most kids would not do what you did. That's yeah. what he told him. Most kids would not do what you did. They would not confess. They would definitely not come to the store. Well, one thing that can happen is it starts to become a habit. Yeah. Well, like, oh, nothing yeah. happened. Well, he also told Joey that there was a boy who had stole something, you know, and that he was banned from coming to Walmart. And it's something that he can, you know, that this little boy, I guess they had caught him a few times. And so there were consequences. And, you know, he said we could have sent him to jail. But because he was younger, you know, we just decided to ban him from the store. Yeah. But he, you know, told Joey, you did a good thing. That's cool. You know, that's good. But it's, it's even as adults, <laughs> like I'm like, Ooh, this is a good lesson to teach him. Yeah. But when he confessed to you, how did you feel as a parent? How did you feel? It felt good. I mean, right? it, it felt good to see that, it's- <laughs> that it bothered him that much, yes. you know? Yes. And yeah, I guess it, it's like one of those signs that, you know, that he's, that he's got a, a good head on his shoulders. He's got a good heart. Yep. 
and that he can and he trust knows us. what's right and wrong yeah and, and that, that too he can come to us and that he can talk to us that if something if he gets into some kind of trouble yes yeah. and i remember that's another thing we need to talk to him about pinky promise especially with him and audrey because he's gonna start getting older yeah and that's the more challenging years for boys they start getting into shit right I did a pinky promise with Audrey and Joey, and I t- and I I told them I promise you to never get angry with you when yeah. you make a mistake. I promise to, you know, regardless of the situation, I will always love you. There's nothing that you have to do to earn my love. You just being a part of my life, me just being able to hold your hand. Yeah. Or to give you a hug, just you being around me is a gift. And I think it's so important as parents that we remind our children that. Yeah. You know, because there there's going to be times where they're going to feel bad because they're not getting the grades that they feel that they should be getting. Or they make a mistake or whatever it may be. If they know that, you love them regardless of whatever mistake that they make. And they understand that there are consequences. Be, regardless with the consequences, your love is unconditional. Yeah. And being real to them, I feel that he did what he did because as a grown woman, yeah, I held a secret within of me stealing something and I held on to this for so long. Yeah. And it and was it was kind of cool that you could share that story with him before. Right. And it helps him maybe like let us know what he did. Mm-hmm. And then after like I share a story with him too. Yes. That's like, hey, I did the same thing. Because we're not perfect. You know, we're not perfect. And our kids when they are younger they look up to us yeah. as if everything we do is right and correct. There was a book that we were listening to and they were saying that it was kind of, it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Mm. That yes. Like in the beginning we're like the wizard. And like we run the show, we're perfect, mm-hmm. everything is great, like your parents could do no wrong. Right. But then all of a sudden something happens or or whatever, like it comes to a certain they point where certain they get age. to see behind the curtain. Yes. And they're like, wait a minute. It's like mom and dad are not perfect. Like right. they, what the hell was that? Another thing, and this is probably going to flip out, flip a lot of you parents out. <laughs> but I know it's happened to me. And I know for a fact it's happened to you because you had mentioned it. That when they get to a certain age, if you are talking a lot, but not leading. Yeah. Don't do this, right? Hey, don't hit your sister. Hitting is not right. Yeah, or yelling. Don't, yeah, you're right. They're getting in trouble at school for putting their hands on other kids, whatever. And then they come home and they get a call from the school and now the parents are pissed off and the way they discipline is by hitting. Yeah. How are you telling your children it's not okay to hit when that's how you're disciplining them? Yeah. Yeah. You know, or don't smoke, but here you are smoking. Yeah. It's leading by example. It's being very aware of how you're parenting. But the kids, when they get older, wait a minute. My mom... She used to say this. Right. But to- do but the do total something different. opposite. Yeah. Because they've been watching us since. They Always. Were, Always. Right. You know, so I think being more aware and being more present on how you are leading. Yeah. I think there's a couple things. Because um, you may get called out one day when they get to a certain age. Yeah. There, there was a. Well, it kind of has to do with what we were just talking about. But I think also you have to like the lessons that we talk to them, that we share with them. Mm-hmm. Like you said, we have to I think you were saying we have to like. Repeat them 
from time to time. Yes. Remind them. Remind them that. That, and, and use every opportunity that comes up, like with this, with the Walmart or something that happens in the future. If we can kind of relate it back to a similar lesson or whatever, it's mm-hmm. just taking the opportunities to keep reminding them of the same things. Yep. But not, being vulnerable with them just, too. Yeah. About not just things that, that you've done. Yeah, exactly. But also reminding them of things that have happened. Because we were talking about that too, is that sometimes they need to be reminded of things that they've done in the past that they were able to work their way out of hmm. or or even just reminding them of things so that they can remember them correctly mm. because they don't yes. remember them the way that they actually were. There was there was something recently and something that I've talked about where back in the day when I used to there was a point in my career where an opportunity came up and I always wanted to be on day shift. Because that's the best for when you have a family. Like the kids are in school. Mm -hmm. I'm at work. I get home. You're home. The kids are home. It's like, you know, regular family stuff, right? Right. So that was always my focus is to be on day shift. But an opportunity came up and they were like, you have to go to night shift for at least like two years or something like that. Right. And um, I was like, all right, I'll do it. With the only condition is that after that, I want to be able to go back. So during that, that period... I decided that I know it's going to be hard for me because I know this is what happened to me as a kid. My dad worked nights his entire career, still does. And I hardly get got to see him when I would be at home. Right. You know, he would be sleeping when I was going to school in the morning. Mm-hmm. Then he would be at home and awake while I was at school. And then he would leave to work. And then I would get home from school and then he wouldn't get home from work until I was already asleep for the next day. So that was kind of like the week. So when I went to night shift, I decided like every day before I go to work, I'm going to go visit the kids at lunch Mm -hmm. and I'm going to take them lunch. This was before COVID. You can't freaking do this anymore. But you know what? Even still, I would try to figure something out because not only that, when I was working night shift, I knew one thing that was going to be difficult was waking up early in the morning. But I used to wake up early and help them with their lunches and get them ready for school and all that stuff because I knew that I, even though I didn't want to get up early, mm-hmm. that was the only time that I was like, I only have little opportunities to spend with my kids. There you go. So I'm going to wake up early and help them with their lunch, help them get ready for school, see them off. And then if I want to go back to sleep i can go back to sleep and then go to work or but that was never the case because after that i'm getting ready to do other stuff and then i go visit them for lunch come back home for a little bit and then leave to work right um i don't want you to lose your thought yeah but what i was what i was saying about this whole thing i did that for like two years when they were little Mm -hmm. and i was talking to joey the other day and i was i was like hey do you remember do you remember that and he was almost like, like he almost doesn't, didn't remember it. Mm. And I'm like, dude, I went to your school every day for almost two years for your lunch. And I used to come and see you. And I think he, he didn't forget, but he has to be reminded because those memories will go away over time. You know what I mean? Yep. There's uh, one thing I wanted to reiterate what you said. Because if you're a parent, more than likely, if you're watching the show, you are a parent. You said something that was so important. I did. Because there are a lot of dads and moms out there that work a lot because they have to, whether they're a single parent, whatever it may be, they have to work in order to provide. And they don't have all the time in the world to spend with their kids. You gotta make but it like happen. you said, the little bit of time that you had, you made it count. And that's what it is. It is finding Dude. just a little bit of time that you have 
to be present with your child, to sit there with them, to talk to them, to read to them, to ask them questions about school, to have fun with them. Have fun with them. Find that inner child within and sit with them and laugh and talk to them about when you were their age and the things that you used to do and maybe some of the things that you messed up, all the things that you did, all the lessons that you've learned so that they can start seeing you as human. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, okay, so my mom went through this. My dad went through this. Okay, I'm not a bad kid. This just happens. Nobody's perfect. No. It's okay. That's how you learn. Like I rather Joey gone through that lesson living with us versus moving out and trying to steal a video game or something. Do you right. understand? Yeah. So that we can walk him through it. Yeah. You yeah, know, with sure. Audrey, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? Um, well, we were also talking about, I don't know if you want to switch to something completely different. No. Or because I wanted to talk about something with Audrey. Well, we were also like with reiterating with the kids and helping them mm. remember stuff correctly. Yes. We were also talking about, you know, growing up and there was something that Joey brought up a memory oh. to me. Mm -hmm. And I still can't remember exactly what it was, but right. it was recently. And he brought something up where he was like, oh, yeah, when I was younger, like this and this and that happened. And like I, I looked at him and I'm like, when did that happen? And he was like, oh, when this and that. And I was like, actually, no, because this was happening all the time. And I like I kind of broke it down. I was like, whatever, you, however you remembered that was incorrect. Because and sometimes like I, I know you've had uh, a situation like that. Yes. Right. Yes. So as children, right, they only see black and white. That's well, it. Yeah. You, you had a situation you like love that. Me or you don't love me. But right? you didn't re recognize what happened until you were right. like a couple of years ago. Yeah. So for 36 or years recently, I thought going through my coaching, my process, the coaching process, I always looked at. At my childhood as we were poor and there was a situation that happened where I witnessed my mom looking for money in the sofa cushions between the sofa cushions and as a nine-year-old little girl because the entire story wasn't shared with me Maybe I just asked her, what are you doing, mom? And she's like looking for money. No. Yeah. Immediately as a nine little, a uh, nine year old little girl, I'm thinking we have no money. Yeah. How, how are we going to buy food? How are we going to pay for the rent? Are we going to, we're going to be homeless? Like I created a story within my head. And I remember being that little girl that young making a decision that I was going to be successful and success as a nine-year-old in that situation is all about money. Right. Right. Yeah. And I was chasing that for as long as I can remember. And while I'm going through my coaching process, my coach asks me, Sonia, hold up. You just shared with me prior to this that you not, never had to worry about where your next meal was coming from. You also shared with me, though you lived in the projects, you had your own room. You also shared with me, yeah, that you had clothes and, you know, that you had these shoes and that you remember going to the, the Salvation Army at times when you guys didn't have. He's like, but did you ever not have? No. Yeah. I'm like, no. He's like, so who are you comparing yourself to? Right. He's like, your entire adult life, you've been running from this imaginary story that you provided because have you ever asked your mom about that situation? Because maybe she lost money 
in the cushion when she was sitting down, she noticed that she was missing $20 and maybe she thought it fell in between the cushions. Yeah. But you made up this whole story like yeah, you, you had some, zero whole money. Other thing going on. Yeah. And as kids, it's that's just how we work. So being parents, it's very important to talk to your kids to see. Ask questions. Right. Yeah. So they they don't have to make up their own stories. You can help them remember the what stories exactly, correctly. Yes. Right. Exactly. And that I think I was just thinking this, but like the the thought when when I was talking about my job and even all this like asking questions so that they understand the right story, I think before I ever accepted the job, my thought was auto, like immediately how am I going to make this work? It wasn't like just take the job and figure it out. Mm. It was like, yeah, you're going to be on second shift. So before I ever even start, like, what's the plan? Because my priority is always you and the kids, the family. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I think when you put it that way, that is what you think of first. It's like, yes, I'm taking this job, going to second shift, making the sacrifice to move up in my career. But at the same time, how can I still put my family first? And that is waking up early and spending a little bit of time with them, going to visit them for lunch, meeting up with you for lunch, going to work or, or whatever. And then when I get the opportunity to switch back, I switch back. And that's the sacrifice that we have to take as parents. You found a way to make it work. And when Instead of making excuses, you found a way. And when you're when you put your family first like that, that's when it, it's like at the front of your mind all the time. It's when you're mm -hmm. asking the questions about, oh, well, like how was school and what do you think about this? And oh, why do you think that? And then you start getting into stuff. Right. It's so important to ask questions. It really is, because then you'll get to know your child know the way they think and help them to understand things that they don't understand or that they may be confused by. Yeah. And instead of correcting them, because a lot of times as parents, it's so much easier just to correct them. Yeah. Like today when Joey was, you know, cleaning the blinds, he's like, mom, how am I supposed to do this when this is in the way? And I'm like, well, Joey, what do you think you should do? Yeah. Well, I think I should because he was cleaning the blinds in the office. And yeah. your set was in the, his way. And I'm like, well, what do you think you should do? Okay. Da, 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 da. Well, I can work around it. Great idea. Why don't you do that? Instead of me telling him, well, Joey, all you have to do is move. Allow them to think for themselves. Yeah. That's, that's tough because. Like so, so many times either we want to do it for them because right. they're going to, it's going to take so much fucking longer. Right. Because you're just watching them fuck it up. Right. And it's like, but that's I could the do best. It, but that's what they need to do. Right. Yeah. And that's with everything in life. And it's the hardest thing to, and it's, I have to have it written somewhere because it is hard to not just tell them what to do. Like yeah. Adriana, right. mom, how do I cut this tomato? Well, how do you think you should cut it? Right. You understand it, it's with everything, mom, I'm having a situation with my friend at school, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, what do you think you should do? What do you think will be the right thing to do? Yeah. It's getting them to think. And a lot of times they get frustrated because they just want you to give them the answer because they're so used to us giving them the answer. Yeah. I think if we focused on that, at, from a younger age, it wouldn't be so hard as right. they get older. Right. But now at this point, we have to kind of like undo the shit that we've done. Like we've given them too many answers and now it's right. a struggle to get them to do the shit that they need to do. Right. You yeah. Know? And not react because as parents, it's so easy for us to react when they do something incorrectly. Right. Yeah. Like when he did take that from the store. It's like, well, yeah. how do you feel we should correct it? I feel that I should take it back. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. And 
And I even told him, I'm like, Joey, how did you feel when you were playing with that? How did you feel when you were playing with that, knowing that you took it? It didn't feel right. I said, yeah. do you know if you would have probably kept that toy, you probably wouldn't play with it that much because it was a reminder of something that you did wrong? Yeah. Every time you go play with that thing, That's it's it. going to eat you up. Right. Because you know you took it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And if he didn't have the courage to confess what he did, that would be added. It, it would just be a, a little shame, a little fucking thing within, just added to all yeah. the other shit when you're fucking 40, That's right. 45, and you're That's just like, yeah. Seriously. Yeah, it's true. Seriously. Yep. That's why, you know, when I was going through my coaching process, like, first of all, it was the most I've ever invested in, in myself, right? Yeah. And he told me, he's like, Sonia, this isn't going to be easy. He's like, that's why I charge what I charge. He said, yeah. because if I only charged you $5,000, you would have threw in the hat a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, if he told me that I was going to be conf confessing to you, yeah. that I was unfaithful, I wouldn't have hired him. I would have been like, mm, I don't think I'm ready for that. Nope, not doing it. Not paying you twelve grand To make me do that. To make me do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was the entire process. Like in order for you to ha live in peace, you have to have inner peace. Yeah. And in order to have inner peace, you have to release all those dark secrets in order to be free yeah. and live. Yeah. Because every little secret, every little dark secret that you've just ever done weight. is lingering it's just sitting there and festering. And then you wonder why you're so emotional or why you're so unhappy or why you're acting out this way or why your business isn't moving forward. Yeah. You know, why is it that I take, you know, one step forward and two steps back? Why is that? It's yeah. because you have a lot of shit that you have to release. Yep. Last night, before we get add? into anything else, make sure you guys go to opposite to track podcast dot com. Share it with the people that you know when you guys go there. Like I said before, you guys can follow all of our social media there. You can watch the podcast there. You can listen to it there. Uh, you can click the support the show link and you'll see our Amazon link. Whenever you purchase anything through that Amazon link, it'll help out the show. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It, everything is the same price, but we get a little bit of a kickback whenever you guys shop through Amazon using our link. Uh, and it's the holiday season. So, yeah, yes. whatever you guys are shopping, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that stuff. All that good stuff. Do it through our link and it'll help us out. Uh, we appreciate and, you all. Uh, you'll also see a link to Trust Inc. And Trust Inc. We are a nationwide mobile notary and signing agency. So if you are in the process of refinancing, selling, or purchasing a home, you can request Trust Inc. to be your signing agency. Yep, and you can go to Trust Inc. directly by going to trustinkusa.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's get into buy me a coffee. Right. If you would like to buy us a virtual coffee, that's another way to support the show um, or maybe an alcohol beverage, whatever it may be. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod. Also, if you would like to do a monthly yeah, like if you want to support us on a month, monthly basis, you when can, you go to buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod, you'll see a way that you can do that there. It's yeah, pretty, you could pretty do that easy. As well. yep. Yes, yes. Cool. And if you would also like to, this is something that I'm um, giving. I've, I've always loved to serve. I've always loved to give. And then so this is just a way for me to give to you all. If you are interested in a two hour gifting session, coaching session with me, uh, feel free to give us a call at 480-331-9846. There you go. Leave us a voice message or you could even inbox us, Facebook, wherever you watch yeah, just us get a hold or of listen us. to us. However you can get a hold of us, you can do it on our website, any of our social media, yep. just get a hold of us and, uh, yeah, we'll get you yeah. hooked up. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, so, so was, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, so <laughs> last night, uh, you know, our daughter asked if she could hang out with two of her friends um, at the park. And our park is just right across from our house. And it just happened to be, you know, two boys. I know um, one of the boys and I just... 
I told her, we told her yes. Yeah. So she's at the park and she's hanging out and we had plans on walking our neighborhood. Yeah. Which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> yes. Hot cocoa and coffee. We yeah. Decided. We were talking about Halloween. Now they're setting up for Christmas. Yeah, and it's, it's beautiful. It's freaking nuts. So we decided we were going to go for, for a walk. But, you know, I started to think, you know, because she is 13 and she does have, you know, a little boyfriend and he's a really cool kid, really nice kid. I am so grateful and proud because he is a good kid, yeah. like all the way around. So it's like, I know. And I, I mean, I never thought that she would want any different because yeah. she sees us she sees the relationship we have she sees how you spoil me you open the doors for me like you just we have such a great relationship and the love and just everything that we are leading by example everything yeah. right that she's not going to want anything less yeah but you just never know right because your kids sometimes can follow the path or go to you know go off on a different path so I had really no idea of how she would choose a friend. And when I met him, I you were happy. was happy. Yeah, me too. Because he is He's just nice as innocent or even more innocent than our daughter. Yeah. You know, like they've been dating or whatever for a how long weeks, now? Maybe a few no. weeks. Been min yeah, maybe no. a month. Maybe, yeah. No kissing, which is great. They hold hands. Yeah. But it's very innocent and it's so cute. Anyway, so um yeah, proud mommy moment, proud daddy moment, right? Yeah. Um, and he always yeah. It's tough, <laughs> man, because like as a dad, <laughs> like you feel like you should be like, like that's that's my daughter. <laughs> but like you said, he's he's a nice kid. And when you see it, like they're I don't know. I think I, I, I have a pretty, uh, it's almost like you can sense, like you can sense yes. somebody's innocence. Yes. I don't know. No, Maybe yeah. they could be fooling us. I don't know. But it's like, there, there's, cer <laughs> there's certain kids, like they'll, they'll come over and you just see that they're still a kid. Right. And you can still see that in them, you know? So it's like, all right, you know. And to, I think about myself at her age and I see them and it's just innocent. Right. Right. Because yeah. I mean, at that age, you were already 13. working at a club or some strip yeah, club. Maybe much. who knows? No, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, my God. So it, it, we've done a really good job with helping them to keep their innocence. Yeah. And this can go and this is now I'm going off the far end here, but it goes. It began with. The day they were born. The day they were born, we already knew the type of parents that we were going to be. Yeah. Right? We were very particular with what they were watching, with what they were listening to. We were very much involved from the beginning. If I wasn't around a lot, you were definitely around. Yeah. Right? Like we knew we had a vision of the type of parents we wanted to be, even though at the beginning we did have some challenges it, because we were such new parents, but we always knew. Well, like we've talked about this before, but I think one thing that we've always done well is that we look at, we're always looking at getting better at everything. And parenting wasn't any different. You know, like we had, when we first got together and we got the kids, like we had to learn that quick as best as we could. I mean, it's not like we figured it all out, but we tried to figure out what we could you at the time that we had. When you say the when, kids. when we had, uh, you know, we first got together passed. when mm -hmm. your sister passed and we had our nephews and niece living with us. You know, that was tough. And we did like go through some, we went to some classes and, mm -hmm. you know, look at stuff up on the internet. And then we had kids of our own or at the same time, we're having kids of our own mm -hmm. and, you know, not wanting to mess them up. And, and just, I, I think it was the path of, getting better in business and in all this other stuff that you start to figure out. It's like, Oh, it's not just business that I can get better at. Right. There's information about everything parenting. So I can learn about that too. Right. So that's where, you know, just the, the growth has continually, you know, just kept happening. Right. 
So what I was sharing was that, uh, you know, last night, Audrey's at the park and it's dark. It gets dark at 530, you know, with these two little boys. And most parents would be, I don't know, uh, cautious or I don't know. She's it's one little girl and two boys. Right. Yeah. And I was thinking. About. How other parents would respond to her wanting, you know, their daughter to go hang out at the park. Yeah. I was just thinking of the entire situation. Like what made me feel it was okay. And Audrey, we all have a very good relationship. Yeah. Right. And I trust her. I trust the daughter that we raised. To make the decisions. And. And Because I was trying to think, is it, is it right? Is it wrong? Is she old enough? Is she, is she, is she? And it came down to that. Like I trust her and I know her. And even if, right, even if she was bloke blowing smoke up our butts yeah right i want her to be under our roof when mistakes are being made Hmm. so that we can help her to recognize the decision that she made created the result you understand right and and getting her to recognize that the decisions you make, whether a good decision or a bad decision, has results. Yeah. And it, you're re- and you're the and you're creating it. It's funny, like you, you say that like you want her to make the mistakes under our roof so that we can help them. And that that reminds me of this um this video that I've seen. It might be on the resource list. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and download that on our website, opposites attract podcast.com. But this guy uh, that we've seen his videos online and uh, his name is Saad Guru or something like that. He's like a monk, oh, I like the him. monk guy. Yes, yes. But he was talking about parents and kids and how you don't own your kids. Mm-hmm. Like... Yeah, they came from us, but they're they're, bar- they're human beings. They're being borrowed. They're yeah, they're being lent to you. No, <laughs> You're right. You have them for a short, and we get to guide them. Yes, yes. And hopefully, because of what we like, the relationship that we build with them, mm-hmm. they will communicate with us, and they will come to us when they have problems and when they need advice. And they're like, "Hey, mom and dad seem to." be doing pretty good in this area maybe we should see what they have to say about this or whatever right right and And then it also reminds me of the book that i was just reading be water my friend about bruce lee Mm -hmm. and how he said that he would look at he he didn't want to consider himself like a guru or a teacher Mm -hmm. and which is a similar thing it's like you don't own your kids And he said that he just wanted to be a signpost for a traveler who's lost. Right. Which is, you're not, you don't own them. You're just trying to help them through a situation. They're lost in this situation that you're in and we're trying to help them through it. Right. You know? Yep. And that's exactly it. But it is difficult as a parent (laughs) to sit back. And we have yet... Mm-hmm. we're doing it now we're sitting back and letting it unfold with audrey having a boyfriend knowing that there's a possibility and those two are very close to each other right like they're yeah. they get along very well very good and he may be moving you know yeah. and in a year or so and audrey is aware and so allowing her to get into this relationship knowing that 
her heart may get broken. And we're just sitting here allowing things to unfold. Yeah. Right? And we may have to be the ones, or we will have to be the ones, if that's the way things happen. To help her through it. To help her through it. Yeah, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing. I mean, yeah, it sucks. But we've talked to her about it too. Like, the reality is, have fun. Enjoy, you know, being with this boy. But the truth is, 99% of relationships from junior high school aren't going to make it through marriage. Right. And everything, you know. So don't, I, I know, it, it, and it's hard because <laughs> you're so young and you're in it. Right. And we're fucking older, you know, right. and you're just, but, you know, it's kind of tough. But it's it's nice to be there, like you said, to be there and help guide them through it. Right. Is there anything else that you have? Because there was something that we talked about last week that. So really quick, uh, Joey's going to be being picked up in five minutes to go to Lucas's party. So I don't know if you want to do a live call (laughs) to let him know to get ready. Um, Yeah. So anyways, um, I think I was good with that. Let me double check. Um, last night, so Joey has a different group of friends and every now and again, we'll have one of them here for dinner. And last night he had his little friend. She's never, this is her second time, um, having dinner with us. And we do things a little different here. So every night we try to, we have dinner together. Let, even if it's after softball, sometimes it's a late dinner, but we make that a priority, a priority is us having dinner with our, with our children. And uh, she was here and listening to the different conversations and listening to the way she's you know, her situation, her life situation and her, you know, mom and dad ended up getting a divorce and Joey's like listening to the story and he's like, hold up, what? Like he's getting caught off guard and he's not understanding some things because, you know, when you grow up with two parents and you get into this caught up in this little bubble, not realizing that not everybody lives the way you live. Yeah. It's crazy because nowadays it may be the other way around. Like most people may not live the way you live. Right. But I was, Joey was telling me how, you know, she liked the food. Like, you know, that we, we yeah. cook well and, and uh, we get that a lot from his friends. So yeah. she's like, I think I'm going to try to have dinner here more often. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) But it's also knowing that the kids, it's not just our kids that we're leading. I like that thought too. Right. It's not our kids. Their friends are going to have memories of being with us here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And And, and who knows? That might be like it for them. Like if their home life isn't the greatest, they may be like, hey, I remember my friend Joey or Audrey. They had, like I used to go to their house and it was pretty cool. Or like, I remember the family was happy or whatever. And maybe that for them is yeah. like, I know it may, it's possible. Like it exists. I've seen it. Yes. Yes. So that's cool. And we always wait for everyone to be seated for dinner before anyone starts eating. Yeah. And all the kids that come here, they're just not used to that. Yeah. So Joey kindly r- lets them know. Yeah. We don't start eating until everyone's seated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and funny. and I just yeah, it's a good feeling knowing that it's not only our kids that we're leading by example, but it's also the neighborhood kids. Yeah. Because we have them over all the time. Like last night, we only had her over for dinner. Did we have like yeah, was it last night? Yeah. Or yeah. And normally we have kids here all the time. Yeah. Staying the night or just all up in the house playing. You know, it it's tough 
but we've talked about one of our old friends, our neighbor next door. He said, make your house the place where the kids want to be. Right. You know, because it and, and it's tough because it's like it's loud. <laughs> yeah. There's kids running all over the place. <laughs> right. But at the same time, you know what your kids are up to. Right. You know, they're here. Right. They're playing around. They're making noise. They're shooting each other with Nerf guns. They're wrestling upstairs. They're whatever. Right. Enjoy it. Enjoy it because one day you're going to look up and you're going to have an empty home. And with that, there was something that we talked about last week. And I wanted to read this real quick before we get out of here. But this was the post that my mom had sent me. And it was about the last time that this mom realizing that she had missed the last time that she washed her daughter's hair. Mm. So it was I thought it was a night like any other night. I was folding the laundry on my bed, listening to my daughter sing her heart out in the shower. We've had that before. Mm -hmm. Then my throat tightened and I felt panic set in. When did I last wash her hair? I ran to the bathroom and opened the door so I could yell inside. Katie, do you need any help washing your hair? Her reply brought tears to my eyes. No, mama, I'm fine. I've always tried my best to appreciate every day with my seven children. That's a lot of appreciation. With seven children. <laughs> Oh man, there have been, there has been a motto I've lived with in parenting ever since I've had my first child. Make sure they remember the joy yesterday, experience joy today, and anticipate joy tomorrow. I like that. I just didn't know tomorrow would come so soon. I'm a firm believer in kids playing hard and getting dirty, and my two oldest daughters sure did that. Every day they were out in the Arizona sun, sunshine, climbing, digging, swimming, uh, swinging, and getting very, very dirty. Children have to get dirty. It's a universal law, and I'm not about to tamper with universal law. But with dirt comes baths, and I remember when the two oldest daughters, Kelsey and Katie, would take baths together. I would wash their hair, then let them play in the bathtub for a while. <laughs> we used to do that, and that's over now. It was our routine. Then they got older. Baths turned into showers. But I was still there to come in and help them wash their hair. Then the hair washing turned into just helping them rinse out the shampoo. Then the rinsing turned into the occasional, let's go back in the shower and help you rinse out that one spot on the top of your head. Mm -hmm. Then came, no mama, I'm fine. Here's the deal with motherhood. It's our job to raise. You should be reading this. <laughs> It's making me cry. I can't read that. I would be, I'm already a mess. Listen up, do that. listen no. up, ladies. Here's the deal with motherhood. <laughs> it's our job to raise independent kids, but no one tells you how to handle it when it really happens. That night it happened. I thought back, when was the last time? When was the last moment I rinsed the shampoo out of her hair? Why didn't I know it was the last time? If I would have known, I would have done a better job. That's right. Or made it last longer or kissed her head or something. I would have mm -hmm. done something. I couldn't see the laundry anymore because the tears blurred my vision. But I kept folding, folding and praying. God, help me remember how quickly this is going by. Help me appreciate every single day, even the hard ones. Show me the beauty in each moment, even the bad ones. The cure isn't to slow down. That's impossible. The cure is a heart of wisdom. The wisdom to know that broken dishes, stained clothes, spilled food are never reasons to lose your temper the wisdom to know that school assignments can always be done later after the sun sets and the mud puddles have all dried up the wisdom to know that every moment is sacred is a sacred moment changing diapers snuggling on the sofa swinging at the park even washing hair mm -hmm. they're all sacred if you can just slow down enough to see it there will be a last fort with chairs and blankets there will be a last story before bed there will be a last outfit put on the barbie doll there will be a last swing at the park. We don't need to know when the last one will be. We just need the heart of wisdom to appreciate each one. I took longer brushing her hair tonight, and I lingered as I put her, her hair into a single braid down her back. When I kissed her goodnight, it lasted a couple more seconds than usual because after seven children and years of thinking I had all the time in the world, I realized something. Life will run off with you if you let it. Sometimes you just have to stop and breathe it in. Thank you, God, for braids before bedtime. Thank you for messy kitchens and Legos on the floor. Thank you for noisy dinner plates and late night conversations for forts, baby dolls, finger paint, 
and bedtime stories. Thank you for broken wrists and shampoo for brunettes. Thank you for teaching me to number my days. And God, when I forget, please give me a nudge and number them for me. By Hannah Kel- uh, Keeley. Mm-hmm. And I think they might be in Arizona. Maybe we can get her on. And so there you go. But man. That is definitely a great reminder. Sit on that, ponder it, appreciate, live it. Thank you guys for being with us. Yes. Make sure you guys go to our website, opposite to trackpodcast.com. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching Opposites Attract Podcast. Where we get better. Together. Bye. Bye.